What's in this thing? Today we have the XFX GeForce 8800GS and I'm going to overclock it. The 8800GS was released in early 2008 and was noted at the time for its overclocking abilities, mostly because it's essentially a cut down 8800GT. I'm using my test bench rig for the benchmark runs. Specs are i5 3570K overclocked to 4.3 GHz. The motherboard is an Asus PB-Z77V LX with 8 GB of DDR3 running at 1333 MHz. I have a Crucial BX500 240GB SSD and the power supply is a Seasonic M12-2 520W. Let's start with the baseline. I'm going to be using the Unigen Tropics Benchmark tool as it's from the same time period as the graphics card. It'll be running at 16x900 full screen, 2x anti-aliasing, shaders on medium and the rest stay the same. After running the benchmark we get a score of 722, not bad. Now we have a starting point, let's see how much more performance we can get. There is another version of this card, the XFX GeForce 8800GS XXX that has a higher clock speed so let's try them. I'll be using EVGA Precision to alter the core, shader and memory clock speeds on the card. After running the benchmark we get a result of 825, over a 100 point improvement. Now let's try pushing the card a little bit further. I've settled on 712 core, 1782 shader and 900 memory. I was worried if the card would allow high clock speeds as some reviews of the time mentioned a BIOS slash driver lock to prevent high overclocks. However, it would seem they were right about the XFX or it just doesn't exist. Either way, let's give it another benchmark. After running the test, we get a score of 911, still improving. Now let's find the absolute limit for this card. Hold please. So after a bit of fine tuning, I've managed to get an extra seven megahertz on the memory. Not a huge jump, but let's see if it increases the score. The benchmark gave a score of 912. Still an improvement, I suppose. I think we've now reached the limits for this card. However, there is still the option of BIOS modding. Disclaimer, I really wouldn't recommend trying this on any graphics card at all. It's really easy way of bricking your card and ruining your day. Using a combination of NV Flash and Nibitor, we can alter the voltage table of the card's BIOS, allowing us to assign higher voltages to different performance thresholds of the card. Second disclaimer, even though these voltage jumps look very small, they're huge for a graphics card, so just don't do this. So I might have gone a little overboard and set it to 1.4 volts, however I think it's very unlikely that the voltage is actually at 1.4 volts as the temperatures haven't really increased. We got a score of 921 using 720 core, 1782 shader and 918 memory. I did a lot of tests but I couldn't get a complete benchmark run with any higher speeds than those. I think there is a hard limit to voltages on this card, otherwise we would see temperatures rapidly climbing, even at idle. In conclusion, we got a 27.6% increase in performance by increasing the core clock by 24.1%, the shader clock by 23% and the memory clock by 31.1%. Hopefully this is useful to someone. Thanks for watching.